Hello everyone, welcome to this video and in this video I will be showing you an amazing extension for Google Scholar that is going to transform your boring Google Scholar profile into an interesting one. So I'll show you what that extension is, how you can install it and what are the features that it's going to show you very very quickly. So this is uh, the website that provides this extension. Uh, this is Excitation. In Excitation, you can, uh, you can see uh, you have the install button over here. You can click over and download the extension. And I think what team did was a pretty good job because when you see Google Scholar, it's not heavy on analytics. I've made video previously on this topic saying Google should work on at least on the analytics part of Google Scholar, but you don't see anything, at least whatever you have. Uh, you know, researchers are quite happy with that. But uh, as you can see, there is uh, this advanced extension that you can use, which is Excitation. Excitation is going to improvise Google Scholar experience and also improvise the Google Scholar profile. And I'm going to show you how. Okay, so once you install install that, I've already installed it. So I have the extension. I have uh, just disabled the extension over here. I'll go to Google Scholar and, uh, uh, you know, just uh, start with typing something related to uh, any topic like cell communication. And when you search, you're going to get the results like that. And uh, what you see is the title of the publication. You see journal uh, name, you see author author name, and you, you see a few lines of the abstract probably, and then save site option is available. You don't have any information on the quality of the journal, which is uh, you know something that can be, uh, if that can be added, it's going to improvise the experience of uh, users uh, for Google Scholar. Okay, now let's go to the profile. This is my Google Scholar profile, and uh, I can I can I can show you. And in my Google Scholar profile, you can see the articles. You you don't see any information on journal, uh, and it's pretty. It's uh, there is no summary of my publication overall publication. Whether this is uh, Q1, Q2, Q3, there is no information uh, about that. So with that extension, I'm going to enable this extension, right? So I'm going to go back and refresh everything. Look at this. So suddenly a bar appears over here and you can see you have Q1, a bar, green bar for Q1, yellow bar for Q2, Q3, and then NA not applicable. Maybe the documents where you don't have any kind of uh, information available. So this is going to, this extension is going to analyze your data and it's going to divide your publications based on the Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. What are these Q1, Q2, Q3, or Q4 journals? So the Q1 journals, they are the top 25% journal in a specific subject area. So if your green bar is very, very big, so that means you're publishing in a very, very high quality journals like Nature, Cell, Science, all those journals are very high quality. And not only these, there are so many journals that fall into this particular category. Uh, right, so top 25% of the journals, they are in that particular category. They are considered very high impact and prestigious journals with a rigorous peer review standards and strong citation performances. So these are some of the criteria for Q1 journal. Next is uh, the second, which is Q2 journal. They are 25 to 50%. They are still considered really, really good uh, journals because uh, based on the specific field, you can have uh, very high quality journals falling into this particular category. Uh, category. Their impact is also very high. They are well regarded, credible journals with good visibility, but they are less competitive uh, than Q1. And then you have third category, which is Q3, and which is 50 uh, to, to 75 percentile range uh, of specific subject or field. They are not that competitive, and you can publish uh, your articles. When you have article which is not getting published in any of these journals, any of these categories, uh, you can go for Q3. And then you have Q4. Which these are the bottom 25 percent ranking journals. Usually, what happens is most of the universities, most of the institutions, researchers, they want you to publish in Q1 and Q2 journals. Uh, because uh, this is how it goes. These are the top uh, journals, and you also need to select uh, these two, uh, you know, categories because it is really important to identify that uh, uh, which journal falls into this uh, this particular category, and then uh, submit your papers. If uh, you know there is need to improvise your paper, then please do that. Otherwise, if you go uh, in Q4, that is not going to make a significant impact, but you know, uh, that is also fine because the, the good journals, they are going to come from Q4, Q3, Q2, Q1, uh, and, and you know, if you have the publication, good publications, you are getting good citations, uh, right? The, the impact of the journal and the category of the journal is going to improve. So 
this is dynamic. It's going to change depending upon uh, how the journal is performing, how the papers in the journals they are performing. So that uh, depends on various factors. So this is one point. You get a detailed profile, your profile, that what kind of uh, publications you are having, or you can get profile of other researchers immediately that what kind of uh, publication they are having or what kind of quality they are uh, they are publishing. If you go down, what else you are getting is for every paper, you can see uh, the specific uh, uh, score which is Q2 whether it is Q2 and you're getting SJR Q2 category and uh, the, the score is also given uh, next is from which country this journal is so Netherlands if you just put the cursor over here it's going to show you the name of the country uh, if you cannot identify from the flag next is the same thing for the others also so you can also see what kind of uh, publications uh, the journals uh, from where they are publishing their papers right Okay, so as you can see over here, it's quite, uh, you know, quite a lot of Q1, Q2 journals. So I, I feel really proud for that. We are working in the area of cellular intelligence. Not many people, surprisingly, are working in the area of cellular intelligence uh, and cellular intelligence and cell uh, uh, communication, cellular, in cellular intelligence and response. As you can see, if I click on this, you will find very few people, only only one and two, only two people have used uh, this particular keyword. So you can also identify who is working in that particular area, right? So by, by this, you can also identify the people who are working in this area. Many people are working in the domain of uh, cell communication. So from here, you can identify people who are working in the area of cell communication. So Google Scholar is automatically is going to put uh, the professors having very high publication record with very high quality publication on the top so you can see uh, it's arranged based on the number of citations directly so if if you click on any of these uh, researchers you will see that their score is very very high look at that 93 percent q1 if you go down then again uh, it's going to tell you that okay q1 nine, 97 percent and and second one uh, you can see over here q1 94 percent uh, and, and as you can see even the these high profile researchers do publish in q2 journals and then uh, then you have uh, you know many researchers with all 100% Q1 uh, score. So the this is how you can uh, basically explore uh, the researchers in your area and identify what kind of publications they are they are having. Uh, so I'm working in the area of cellular intelligence and and uh, you know trying to publish in that area. Sometimes you know depending upon the area that you are publishing, uh, you may not find journals suitable for that uh, you know sometimes there are areas that you work on are really really new and uh, a lot of uh, lot effort is required to establish the area for example you will in chemistry you'll get very very high impact journals in in uh, let's say uh, humanity you will not get uh, that much high impact journal in biosciences you'll get high impact journals so area wise also makes a huge impact and then on the right side you can see uh, a lot of uh, you know data points for the citations so h index site and index uh, excitation team can also work to improvise this. This is really not very impressive data visualization for Google Scholar. I think there is a lot of improvement that can be done. So Google is ignoring Google Scholar a lot. I don't know, maybe there is no profit that Google is uh, getting from this particular tool. Strategy needs, needs to be improved because there is so much that can be done in this particular domain. All right, so I hope after this, you will also be using this extension and analyzing your uh, profile and others' profile and also uh, papers that you'll get. Uh, one thing I do want to show you again, that now the the, uh, the search result is going to change. You will get what is the category of the journal and you can see uh, from where it is getting published, right? So you have a little bit more detailed uh, on uh, detailed information on the paper that you have, right? All right, so there is this uh, preview available tab also. I, I don't think uh, you can get, yeah, you can get the preview also, nice. All right, so uh, you can get the score over here for every journal and uh, you can identify what kind of uh, category they belong to, which is good. And based on that, you can, uh, uh, you know, include these studies in your journal, uh, in your journal article, so that will make your paper more impactful. All right, everyone, before we conclude, I do wanna show you our own uh, website for uh, research related support which is researchgold.com i keep on adding a uh, lot of courses over here uh, we have 
biosciences related courses, data science related courses. We have programming related courses. And, uh, you know, I keep on populating this. They are not very, very expensive. For example, if you see the price, it's very, very low cost. So if I click on this uh, and, and you will see down there uh, in the curriculum, you will get lots of modules and many of the modules, they are freely available for everyone to access. And when I'm saying freely available, that means uh, you can watch them free and also whatever data is associated with this is also freely available for you to download. For example, if you want presentation, I'll just click on that. Uh, presentation you can easily download this presentation notes and also problem solving word file and quiz is also available so you can imagine a complete video is uh, freely available with all the resources that uh, basically you can explore so i hope uh, that you will you will play around and get the presentation it's a big presentation so for example if you want to teach molecular docking uh, anyone this presentation is become is is a complete presentation uh, with all kind of uh, annotation that you can uh, share with your students, with your uh, friends, and you will understand uh, how the molecular docking is being performed. So everything is being covered. And if you want to complete this course, then you will complete a quiz and you will get a certificate, uh, which you can highlight in your CV and also share with your peers. This is the website that I've developed and I request everyone to visit the website, please. And we can also connect, you can contact me here is the contact detail information email information is also given if you find time then please take these courses and share what kind of experience you had all right everyone i'll meet you in the next video